So the idea of a nuclear war is pretty intense and not something that very many people on this earth have ever had to experience, but we want to put together a list of things that you can do to prepare and to be prepared if it should ever happen. And the first thing you have to think about is an emergency supply kit. So first of all, you want to think, do you have water ready? Do you have non-perishable food items that can last you? And you also want to think about things like batteries. So when a nuclear bomb goes off, it gives off an EMP or an electromagnetic pulse, which can disable things like your cell phones, cell towers, computers, so you're not going to have access to communications, but things like battery-powered radios are going to become really important. So you can find out information, hear other people at what's going on in the world, and batteries ultimately to power any devices are going to be really important since most communications and electronics are going to be gone. And even though the distance of an electromagnetic pulse is not definitive, experts estimate up to thousands of miles away your electronic devices can be affected. So the next thing you need to worry about is shelter. And so there's a difference between a blast shelter and a fallout shelter. For the blast, what you're gonna need to do is get as much concrete in between you and the explosion as possible. So if you're in a house, get in the basement. If you're in a high rise, get to the middle of the building away from windows. When it comes to the fallout, you don't have to have a specific shelter, but you wanna have a thick roof and thick walls. If you're in a home, you wanna blockade all the windows because that's a way that fallout could actually get into your house. You're gonna need two weeks of food and water because that's how long it's gonna take the radioactive materials to decay. So you're gonna be hanging out in your fallout shelter for two weeks and after that you can come back outside and see what's happened to the world. But let's say you're outside when the blast first goes off. Chances are you might still have some time to get in a better situation. So when the bomb goes off, the blast travels the first mile in five seconds and the second mile in the next five seconds and so on. So if you see a flash or know the blast is coming, the best thing you can do is get on the ground face down and put your hands behind your head and brace yourself. This was the method that was taught to kids in school during the Cold War because they thought that at any moment a nuclear weapon could go off. So if they saw the flash or felt the blast, the role was to get under the desks, face down, hands over heads, and brace. We are all very curious people, but it's for your own safety that you do not look at the blast. Even if you're observing the blast just in your periphery, it can cause temporary flash blindedness. And this can be a really big issue when you're trying to figure out how to find shelter. If you look directly at the blast, you can have macular retinal scarring, which can also decrease your vision in the future. Next up, if you can get indoors, you want to remove all your clothing because this can stop the radioactive material from spreading and can remove up to 90% of it off of your body. And then you want to shower. You want to gently blow your nose, wipe your face down, but be careful not to scratch yourself. And you can use shampoo, but don't use conditioner as it bonds the radioactive material and makes it harder to come off your body. If you can't shower at all, the best thing you can do is just take a warm wet cloth and gently wipe yourself down. You always need to think about whether or not you're in the best place you can be. A new mathematical study of nuclear fallout found that after a blast you have half an hour to find the best shelter. So if you're stuck in a shelter and you don't think it's up to par and you know someone who has a better shelter and you can get there in under 30 minutes, you need to head there immediately. Finally, if you need medical attention, try and find it because it can be the difference of life and death, but also you have to be pretty realistic in this situation because there's no international or federal standard on how to help a lot of casualties who have been affected by radioactive uh, destruction. So ultimately people get put in two groups, those who are expected to live and those who are expected to die. This is a horrible situation to be in, but hopefully these tips will help you if you ever find yourself in need of them.